For this video, we're going to go into how to make a laser cut model as well as how to make a 3D printed model using a, an existing 3D Rhino file. So before we start, the first thing that we need to know is we need to know three things, and I've listed it down. The first thing we need to know is what model scale are we going to have. And for our model, we're going to use a 1 16th inch equals 1 foot model. For our material, we're going to use 8 inch chipboard. And what's our laser cutter size? And we have a 36 by 24 laser cutter. So once we know these three things, that'll determine you know, what scale we use as well as uh, what kind of contours we're going to be making later in the video. So let's go back to our model. Uh, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to change our units. So let's type in units. We have it at feet, so let's go ahead and change it to inches. First, units have been changed from foot to inch. Do you want to scale it by 12? We're going to type in no. So essentially what we've done is if you look at the first um, step, we had it at one foot equals one foot. We changed our units to inches. So now we have it at one inch equals one foot. And now we need to scale it by 1 16th to get our desired scale, which is 1 16th inch equals one foot. So let's select everything that we want to scale. Let's type in scale, select any origin point. And for our scale factor, we're going to type in 1 16th. Now, my site was initially 100 feet by 100 feet. So at a 16th inch scale, it should be six inches and a, and a quarter. So 6.25, yeah, by 6.25, great. So now our model is scaled um, to 1 16th inch equals one foot. So now that we have our desired scale, uh, the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna actually start creating our laser cut files. So make sure you have two layers. Uh, under laser cutter, there should be two layers. There should be a layer for cut, and there should be a layer for score. Uh, you might have two different colors. For example, for cut, make sure that you're selecting pure red and make sure that for score, you're selecting pure yellow. And that's gonna be important when you export as a DWG. So let's select our topography. We're gonna to type in contour. We're gonna select our base point, which is the lowest point in our model. And we're gonna select any point that's higher. And for the distance between our contours, we're gonna use our material thickness. Let's go back to our notepad. Our material is gonna be eighth inch chipboard. So that means that every contour slice in our model is gonna be an eighth of an inch. So for our contours, we're going to use our material thickness. So that's going to be an eighth of an inch. So there we go. Those are our contour files. Um, so now that we have our contour files ready, uh, we you realize that the lines aren't connected, and that's fine. You know, we can connect that later. That's not a problem. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to quickly join these together. So now each of those contours are joined. Now the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm actually going to make me uh, make the plug uh, as well as a road footprint. Let's go ahead and copy and paste this. Let's move it up. Um, let's type in extrude curve. Uh, we're going to select the footprint of the house. The footprint of the house. So I'm just selecting the edges of that house. Just I'm extruding it. And I'm going to select each of those lines or the surfaces that I created. And I'm going to type in move. And I'm going to select the exact same point. So I'm going to move from this left corner to the exact same left corner. So you realize that this plug for the house is going to sit in the same location as the house in this model right here. So now, now that I have that, I'm going to quickly trace the top again. So I'm going to draw a line and trace the top of that. And then I'm going to go ahead and delete these surfaces. I don't need those anymore. And I have this existing line. I'm going to join this as well. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make the road as well. So I can delete this house. I'm going to move this road, copy and paste it up. And same thing, I'm going to trace the extent of that road. Select that line. I'm going to type in move. And I'm going to move from the exact same location, left corner to the left corner. I can delete this road. So now that I have this, uh, what I want to do is you'll realize that all of these lines are actually on a separate plane. So first thing, let's go ahead and copy and paste this. Control C, Control V. Let's move this over. And now what I'm going to start to do is I'm actually going to separate each of these lines. For example, each of these cont uh, contour lines, right? So I'm going to select this line. Let's move it over. Then I'm going to select the second line, and then I'll move that over. Select the third line, move it over, and uh, continue to do this and start to separate all of those contours so that they, because essentially when you laser cut, it's going to be a 2D file. So you want to make sure that each of those contours are on a separate, separate space. 
and you'll have to be a little bit more careful once you get to the top because uh, topography starts to get more tricky um, in terms of how it appears. I'm going to stop right there. So now what you realize is, for example, if I take this line um, or take those set of lines and if I go to the side view, you'll realize that each of them are on a separate um, elevation. So we want to make sure that it's all in the same elevation because it's a 2D file. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my rectangle tool. I'm going to go to top view and I'm going to essentially draw a rectangle right here. And I'm going to select that rectangle, type in planar surface. Then I'll select my surface and I'm going to move it underneath all of my contours. Now we're going to use a new command. This is called a project command. So let's go ahead and select all the contours as well as the lines that we have. So I've selected all of those. I'm going to type in project. And it's going to tell me select surfaces, poly surfaces, and meshes to project onto. We're going to select our surface. We're going to type in enter. And you'll realize is that all of those lines are projected onto one elevation. So that's a lot less for us to worry about. So let's go ahead and select that and select the line that we created and move this over. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take my entire surface and I'm going to move it so that I'm working at the elevation that is 0, 0. I want to make sure that my elevation is always at 0, 0 so that when I draw a line, it's at the same elevation, so I don't have to worry about that. So now that we have this, let's go to top view. So we're going to work predominantly in top view from now on. So we have our driveway, we have our plug for our building, and we have those as well. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy all of my cut, cut marks onto the cut layer. So I'm going to change it to the cut layer. So now each of those elevations are on the cut layer, and I'm going to start and finish, finish making those lines. So let's go uncut. I'm going to just quickly connect those lines that were missing. And then let's join those together and join these together. Now the important thing is if you look at this uh, elevation for now, you realize that the plug has to be consistent throughout the same elevation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my plug. For example, this could be the plug. I'll type in copy and the same plug is happening on this top plane, for example. So let's go ahead and select uh, this top plane. And the plug is going to occur here. It's not going to occur there. It's going to occur here and here and here. So I've created four of those locations for the plug to sit into. So if you add those up at an eighth inch um, contour, that's essentially going to be uh, a quarter of an inch. So that's completely fine. So now that we have this, um, the next thing that we're going to do is we're actually going to copy this road as well. So let's type in, we're going to go back to our base, type in copy, select those angles, and we're going to place our road. It occurs there, occurs there. Yeah, that's fine. And I'm going to make sure that my road is on the score layer because um, I just want it to be scored. I'm going to make sure my house is on the cut layer. So let's type in cut. Now the important thing is if you look at this right here, we're going to trim anything that's unnecessary. We're going to type in trim, select our file, and we're going to trim the areas where the house will not sit. If I go back to this file, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to trim the areas where the house will not sit. And that's fine. So essentially, we're creating an open space for that house. We can trim this as well because this is not going to occur. So that's going to be where the house sits into, and we have this open space that will slide into it, just like the topography, how it is currently. So let's go ahead and copy this. We're going to Control c Control v move this down. And in the next video, we're going to start to layer these together and start to label these so that when we laser cut them, we can know how to stack them on each other as well.